causes breast cancer. Right, okay. Um, Pat, would you want to answer that? <laughs> Help us with that? Well, with regard what causes breast cancer, it's something you can't really do too much about. It might just be in your genetics that you have a predisposition for breast cancer, but once you actually realize that it is a breast cancer, there is quite a lot that you can do about it. Um, it's sort of been found that Ghanaian ladies aren't aware of all of the steps they can take. If you pick up a breast cancer really early on, which is the whole purpose of doing a mammogram, then you don't even have to have that breast removed. You could possibly just have that little section of breast removed, let alone going on to have a full mastectomy or radiation therapy or chemotherapy. If it's picked up early, there's so much you can do about it. Um, thank you, Pat. But I've had, I don't know if they're just tales or just fabrications, but I've had people say things like, if you wear bras, you know, like all day or for long hours, you can get breast cancer. Or if you... Um, cook with the same oil, you know, maybe you fry for one, like two weeks, you use the same oil, you can get breast cancer. Those are not true or maybe they aggravate it? There are certain things in our world today that are proven to be carcinogenic or cancer forming. And the fallacy, well, it's not really a fallacy, reheating the same oil and using the same oil over and over and over and burning things in that oil raises the amount of carcinogens in that substance. Um, there's also a story about leaving a water bottle lying in the sun, the plastic of the water bottle. It's also slightly true. Um, microwaving food inside plastic containers, also a little bit true. So it's, it's good just to avoid those. But none of the fallacies like wearing an underwired bra is going to give you breast cancer, that's not true. Um, there are certain things that will give you a predisposition. As I said before, if there's a member of your family that has breast cancer, your mom, an aunt, sister, cousins, then you must be more vigilant and careful with your breasts. But wearing perfumes, deodorants, none of that causes breast cancer. Um, with regard, some of the things to notice um, that could be signs of a breast cancer. You would look for things like a lump that wasn't there last month, discharge from the nipple. Um, it can sometimes be brown and, and, and ready, sort of bloody. Then that's a worrying sign. Also, sometimes on the nipple, you will get dry, crusty skin. Or if your nipple chain, your whole breast changes shape, starts pulling in, that's a sign of a cancerous growth or a growth. And then if the nipple that was once a normal nipple becomes inverted, that's another sign of a breast cancer. So those are things you must let your friends and everyone know are danger signs. If you know anyone that has any of those, please encourage them to go to the doctor. Their doctor will send them for either a mammogram or a sonar of their breasts. We encourage mammograms because they're more detailed. Um, and then we know what we're dealing with and the lady can have treatment earlier. In saying that, not all lumps in the breast are cancer. A huge amount of the lumps are not cancer. Um, especially in young women. Young women have lumpy, hard breasts. So you might just have what's called a fibroadenoma, which is a perfectly normal breast tissue. So please don't run in the opposite direction. Go to the doctor early so that the right things can be done. Also what we call like the reproductive factors, which is
the fact that you have your menses earlier on in life as a woman or a girl, and then you have your menopause later on in life. So I mentioned about the hormones. You have um, a lot more of the hormones going on around you. These ones we call the non-modifiable ones. There isn't much that you can do about. Um, if you've had a cancer before as well, your risk increases. If it's um, a breast cancer, um, that increases as well, definitely. It can come back to the same breast or another breast. Um, and then um, the ones that we can modify, it's, um, I'm sure the dietitian was here not long ago. We all had her. It's what we eat, our diet, lack of fix, physical activity, the fact that we're obese increases our risk. Um, hormone replacement therapy, the pills that we use um, for family planning as well, um, those who do fertility treatment as well. Well, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. You would then have to discuss this with your medical professional, what is best for you. Because if you have a family history, then the, person, the, the doctor will tell you exactly what is best for you. It's basically a discussion. Um, we don't have it in our culture here to visit the doctor very often. And we advocate here once a year at least. See your doctor. Do a health check. Let them do a breast screening as well for you. It's very important. Once a year, if something, I mean, something is wrong, the doctor can pick it up. You do it at home as well once a month. The breast self exams. You should know your breast as a woman. Very important. Um, I was on the radio station this morning and I said, um, I was told that we've been asked that the men should pamper the breast. I would say that women love your breast and let the men respect their breasts. Very important. If you yeah. love it, you know, you, you look at yourself in the mirror, not just your face. Don't just do your makeup. Look at your breast. Don't just put the bra on because you have the padded bras and stuff and it takes care of things. Look at the breast. What's going on around there? How does it look? How does it feel? What's inside there? Once a month, just 10 minutes. It's not much to ask, is it? So and then we can catch this early. I'd like to ask, who knows how to do a breast exam? Who has even the faintest clue how to start? All right, so not very many. I saw a man who almost... <laughs> okay, we have a man who knows how to do a breast exam. <laughs> right, what you should do, ladies, is just stand in front of a mirror once a month. Try and get the same time every month. Your breasts are less lumpy and less sensitive just after your period. So probably a week after your period is a good time. Look at your breasts. See whether anything looks different to how they looked last month. Then, the quickest and easiest way is to actually examine your breasts when you're in the shower or bath. So if you've got nice soapy breasts, so your skin is slippery, you can take the flat part of your hand, your three fingers here, and just press all around the breast and on top of the nipple. Now, as I say, all women have got lumpy breasts. That's normal. But start knowing what your normal pattern of breast tissue is. So that if you next month find something that wasn't there a month ago, you know within a month that there is something new going on in your breast. And then go to the doctor. The big message I would like to portray is that prevention is better than cure. All ladies at the age of 40 should be going for a mammogram. And you keep the x-rays that you get on that day. Keep them always. And in future, say if you're going, World Health Organization says you should go every year for a mammogram. Some ladies might only go every second, but every second is better than nothing. So go at 40 and then keep going. If you've got a family history of breast cancer, you can even start going at 35. And let's go down to brass tacks. The cost of a mammogram is not that exorbitant. During October, QMI has a 20% discount on mammograms. So what would normally be costing 
500 CD is then costing 300 CD. So you're going to come in, you're going to have a mammogram, which is an X-ray examination, and you're then going to have an ultrasound. And then you'll take your report and keep it. So please spread the word from 40 onwards. Ladies should all be coming for a mammogram. Thinking that um, once a year for the mammogram for 300 CDs, that's nothing. Yes, definitely. Um, um, just to add on as well, there's there's some facts now in in Ghana that wasn't there before. Um, the fact that women from the age of 40 to 49 in Ghana are getting that's that's where the the prevalence is. Um, unlike before, I would say possibly because we didn't know, but in Europe and other places, it's from the age of 55. So breast cancer in Ghana is affecting the young people. And if you are at the age of 20 and you know how to do your breast self-exams, by the age of 35 or so, if something is wrong, you would pick it up. It's very important because we're losing a, a lot of our young women. When you, at the age of 40 is when you hit your prime, right? Possibly you're getting your promotions. If you want to be an entrepreneur, possibly you've passed that first five years. You're making profits and stuff like that. You have kids, young kids. Um, you're enjoying life, basically. And then, unfortunately, this thing hits you. It is real. But we definitely have to do something about it because we can't do something about it. And then also, we don't talk about cancer much in our country. If you know that a family member had cancer, you would then be a bit more vigilant, I would say. So we should share this information. Because as you do, you can save a life. It's, it's very important. But as she said, it's the kind of genes that we have, which we can't do much about. But what we can do is to detect this thing early. Because if it is detected early, you can be saved. And in the Western world, 80% of women do um, survive breast cancer. But back in Ghana, more than 50% die. And it's real. And the numbers that we have, even the statistics that we have, is only centered around Kolebu and Konfu Anochi, which is 2,000 women a year. Even that is huge. So consider those in the rural areas that um, don't go out to have it checked. Um, I had a lady, um, our next door neighbor, who died of breast cancer, didn't say to anybody. She had this for four years. She thought it was a family member who wanted to take over her land. And therefore, they were doing, as usual, as you know, prayers, using herbal. Um, the week that I heard that she had breast cancer, she passed on that week. And um, when I went to see her, she actually had a rotten breast with maggots coming out of it. How can a human being live like that? Yeah. She had to be sprayed with insecticides for these things to leave. And these maggots come out and turn into flies and all that. You know, so these are things that we hide, which we're not supposed to. And also the fear of losing the breast. If you have surgery, you die. You would die because you came very late. And there was nothing much that we could do for you. It's, it's not a disease that we should hide. We now say breast cancer or cancers are chronic diseases, like diabetes or hypertension. You can have medications for it for however long, you know. And then the other thing is, um, as Pat said about the triple negative cancers that we have, um, there isn't much research into this for us as of now, compared to the other kind of cancers that I'll say Caucasian women get. Because we also don't avail ourselves for research. We don't put much... Um, and importance to research in Ghana.